Uh, in our final segment, members of the press and other people were asked out of the pre-legislative hearing on the Parliament Act 2023 after hearing on the Finance Act 2023 earlier yesterday. The Parliament Act, among other things, has a proposition that the outgoing speaker is entitled to retain one of the official vehicles in his possession, three security personnel provided by the state, and home furniture to the tune of 50,000 new leons, which is equivalent to 50 million old leons. Now, the bill also seeks to increase the pension of former members of parliament every five years by 25%. A parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Johnson, um, put this report together based on the public document that was gazetted in February this year. Last year, Parliament of Sierra Leone was bashed after a document entailing an increase in their salaries and other emoluments was leaked to the press. At first, Parliament denied the document. But after that, the leader of government business, Honorable Matinuma, was heard saying, Mr. Minister, be ready. Very soon we'll table our FIAB. Our FIAB will be discussed in this. I am telling the government of the body. What is good for the goose is good for the gallant. We are going down the road now. We can praise you, but we cannot forget ourselves. Mr. Speaker, our very colleagues, first law of nature is self, and we have delivered. Nobody needs to praise us. Go to the archives and check for us what you have done for this nation as members of parliament. What you have done for us to change the narrative, irrespective of political lines. But we are doing it to the interest of Sierra Leone. Even though the welfare bill was already gazetted last year, a new bill entitled the Parliament Act of 2023, which is an act that provides for the establishment of parliamentary commission, to provide for the leadership and governance structure of parliament, to provide for the establishment of the parliamentary service, to provide for salaries and other benefits of members of parliament and staff, and to provide for other related matters. Currently in committee room one, the parliament of Sierra Leone is their meeting to discuss the bill entitled the Parliament Act 2023. Everyone that has to do with the Parliament Act, when you reach at this point, we are going to ask all strangers out to reactivate the, the, the standing orders. We actually don't know the outcome, as strangers were actually outside. In the bill, clause 22 to 25 proposed that an outgoing speaker is entitled to retain one of the vehicles assigned to him, three securities, and 50,000 new loans for home furniture. Not only that, a 25% increment on the pensions of former members of parliament. Also, members of parliament who have served for one term shall be paid a one-off sum of Lyons equivalent of 50,000 United States dollars in lieu of monthly pension. With these pointed out, citizens are seeking answers to the following questions. Why is this coming less than three weeks for the fifth parliament to dissolve? Has the welfare bill been abandoned or some of its provisions adjusted and transferred into the Parliament Act? Joseph Johnson, AYV News, Freetown. Well, thank you very much, um, Joseph Johnson. So with this now, this morning, to discuss this issue, we have Melvin Tijan Mansae, Senior Parliamentary Correspondent, and Lawrence Williams, Media and Political Analyst. Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. You know, this started as um, fake news. But what started on as fake news and questions of, or oh, where did you get the document from, is now becoming a reality, Melvin. Mm. Oh. <laughs> so it just lends credence to some of what we SO2 call fake news these days. If we cannot adequately, well, if institutions are not aptly enough to clarify what is fake or what is real, then it creates room for people to turn to those sources of SO2 fake news. But apparently, I, I think the bottom line there is, is the, the frankness and sincerity of purpose. If something is assured, why, why circumventing it? Firstly, firstly, I mean, as captured in the report, this purported well was, was denied. Mm -hmm. And now, well, it surfaced following a public notice. That's, that's one point I'll be hammering shortly. Mm -hmm. If you want to hold something secret in par Parliament, why encapsulating it in a public notice, where in the attention of the public you know it's going to be attracted to it? And all of a sudden for lawmakers yesterday to say, oh, strangers are not allowed in this deliberation, 
for me, I find it very, very much baffling. And no wonder the public is always lampooning the, the actions of parliament because they're not done with alacrity at all. If you want to do, you do. If you don't want to, you don't. And in this case, it seems as if parliament is playing hot or cold, knowing fully well what could be the backlash behind some of this legislation, particularly the timing more so we are, we are I mean, weeks ahead to the dissolution of parliament and this is coming up. So for me, it speaks to how, how certain the MPs are, are themselves with regards to this welfare bill, its timeliness, its need. Of course, it's going to be needed, but the timeliness, is it timely? When you really feel that you have a concern, it's a genuine cause and it's making sense to you. Mm -hmm. The question becomes, why not own it with your full chest? Because of the, 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 I don't want to say some of the MPs are not bold enough and they are scared of the public outcry and the public backlash. And that is basically falling back at their feet because if you know you want something, you've not engaged, you've not consulted, you've not dialogued, and you are still insisting that you want this thing, of course you're going to attract the backlash that, that is attached to it. And that's, that, that's the reason I think MPs are playing hot and cold around this. They indeed want it, but they are scared of the backlash it will, it, it will provoke, particularly at this time of, um, eve, eve of elections and electioneering process and campaign. So they know fully well that this is not going to be sitting comfortably with the public and the electorate, but yet still what I've described as, well, political arrogance, other man's or, or reluctance, they are still circumventing the whole process. I think that is what is lacking. Yeah. The economic situation as it is currently in the, question, uh, in the country, it's become a problem for everyone. Mm. And these MPs are also serial unions. Mm. They have bills to pay, mm. families to take care of. Mm. Is there no justification at all for their request at this time? Considering again that we are a country fighting against corruption. Hmm. If the MPs do not feel well paid, there is a huge potential for a lot of corruption to continue and escalate. Hmm. So do they in no way have a justification for this? They do. They do in section 94, subsection 4, and same can be said for section um, 74.4, which says in some way parliament can amend its, its privileges, its, its, its gratuities and pensions. Again. There is a catch to it, which I think the parliament is missing here. There are statutory establishments that are, that, are, that are created towards this purpose, and one of which is that of, well, firstly, we should understand the context. This bill, this purported bill, is it seeking to replace, repeal, or expunge the extant Parliamentary Service Act? Because there is an existing law on parliament that talks about their privileges and their conditions. So since we don't know whether this bill, how it sits with the Parliamentary Service Act of 2007, the question will beg, does this purported bill take countenance of the state salaries, pension gratuities, and other benefits acts of 2003? Because it's only that institution and legislation we'll that provides... We'll come to look at the legal aspect of it, but what I'm concerned about is the moral side to it. Mm -hmm. Do they not have a genuine claim here, considering the economic situation and considering that we're fighting against corruption? Mm -hmm. We want our MPs mm -hmm. to actually work in the interest of the people and not focus on corruption. And then the economic situation is just what it is. If the answer can be found on, on, in this same state salaries, pension, gratuity, and other benefits act of 2003, if you look at section 3, A to E, it talks about for a consideration to be given on this provision or increase or, 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 or amend on this pe pension and salary and things like that, you should first take into cognizance the GDP or the GDP per capita, basically the state of the economy. So in as much as legally the lawmakers have the right, but if you go into this law, it gives a precondition under which such an amendment or changes can be made. So if you take, for example, the per capita, the GDP of the country in tandem with what they are requesting, I mean, the question is, is it feasible? Is it realistic? And that's where the moral aspect defeats the legal aspect of this argument that is always going to be there. Yes, we know this parliament, as, 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 I mean, this parliament will be remembered for losing the highest number of sitting lawmakers, I think five or six, deceased. Why? 
for many of them are conditions that can, could have been salvaged if we are if, if they've got that medical attention and medical facilities but again this should not be an alien legislation because this legislation particularly primarily does not only considers lawmakers parliamentarians because if you want to make such an amendment it has got effect on the president the vice president the speaker the deputy speaker members of parliament cabinet ministers deputy ministers even to electoral commissioners so how can you alienate them in this one on this one when they are also having their similar challenges so yes morally and um, constitutionally they have got the powers to amend and make sure that these things happen for them but morally and, and economically, the times cannot be fitting enough. So for me, those are the arguments. Teachers that, uh, are requesting increment. Mm -hmm. Doctors come, they request increment. Several factors of the public request increment. Mm -hmm. What is so wrong for the MPs to request for an increment, Lawrence? Uh, there are also people. Uh, now, we must understand the context. First... All over the world, um, there have been protests in several countries, even in UK, um, teachers, nurses, you name them, public sector workers have made some demands um, on pay rise and all of that uh, because of the current economic crisis globally. Um, for us in Sierra Leone, our situation is sort of um, unique in the sense that um, one there are public sector workers who have, since time immemorial, de been demanding for increase or better conditions of service, so to speak, generally. And um, to some extent, uh, you will see that uh, teachers, there have been increase in the sal on the salaries of teachers, um, few uh, as well increasing on the salaries of um, nurses or doctors, as the case may be. But there are a whole lot of uh, public sector workers who as well demand better conditions of service. Now to the MPs. You want to say, argue that um, given the circumstances, the economic situation in the country, um, it is not reasonable uh, uh, or should I say there could not be any reasonable justification to propose such legislation at this time. But what you must understand is that uh, Back then, the life of the last parliament, at the eve of its closure, um, we saw several uh, 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 um, um, bills, agreements, you know, being ratified at the 11th hour. And uh, some of which had to do with um, conditions of service for uh, members of parliament, which, of course, those who are not present are now enjoying those services. Now, this parliament attempted last year to actually introduce a bill that will see the conditions or the, the, the salaries and other benefits of speaker, members of parliament, you know, increase by almost a hundredfold. Um, when that provoked some kind of public resentment and outrage, um, they sort of, you know, shelved it under the carpet. Now they are proposing something that is in fact not in the public domain as we speak. Um, I saw a post yesterday from parliamentary journalists who were saying, oh, they were asked out of committee room one where the deliberations, I mean, were supposed to take place. So in essence, uh, the, 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 the discussions around the proposed legislation haven't been made public, and in fact, the content of that proposed legis legislation is not something that is public. Even if you go to the government bookshop, whether or not they have it, but when you go there, they will tell you they don't have it. I mean, that, is, that has been the practice for bills that controversial legislations, of course. Even with the IMC Act, the last one they were supposed to introduce before there was this amendment objection and blah, blah, blah. We went there, they will not give it to you. They will tell you they don't have it for sale. Um, uh, uh, um, so there is no reasonable justification. You want to ask whether the parliamentarians have done a good enough job to yeah, deserve. Yeah, it comes such. to it's they are the employees now, and they are asking the employers to increase their salary. Have they worked hard enough to earn a salary increment? We must understand that whatever they do, assuming that the proposed legislation is being enacted. Um, it will have a bearing on the consolidated revenue fund. And if we are saying that um, the fund is shrinking, 
then we must initiate actions to actually uh, 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 reimburse the fund, not to shrink it further. So such actions, I believe, are not in the public interest, especially so when we, some of us, let me just say we, some of us are very much displeased with this parliament in the sense that one, uh, this parliament has failed woefully, woefully to bring in or probe the former bank governor um, on issues pertaining to the economy. The re-denomination of the loan, for example, we printed new currencies. We don't know how much currencies were printed. I mean, we cannot account for the, no, the, 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 the monies we printed. We don't know. Currently, they have ext extended the, 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 the usage of um, the old loans. How much of the old loan, again, is in circulation? We can't tell. And it is only the parliament that has that mandate to rope in those individuals for proper scrutiny. That they have failed to do. Secondly, look at the audit reports that have been published since 2018 to date. This parliament has woefully, woefully failed, or rather reneged its duty to probe into those reports. There has been several publications, for example, by the Africanist Press, showing how monies have been ex expended out of the consolidated fund, frivolous spending. I think it imposes a duty on the parliament to now say, based on these consistent publications, can we understand what's happening within the treasury? Can we have the bank governor? Can we have the ministry of finance and blah, blah, blah? This is a parliament that instituted uh, 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 or commissioned a committee to investigate the pollution of Taya River. And the committee came back, they submitted a report which concluded that um, um, there were large scale, I mean, uh, 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 illegal mining activities in several routes along the river leading to pollution which actually resulted in deaths, several deaths which were reported. This is the parliament that actually commissioned that committee. The committee brought its report. The parliament failed to act on, it, on that report. This is the parliament that has failed in so many ways. And so if they now have the guts to say, okay, yes, they have the legal mandate to do it. But the morality as you rightly mentioned it, the morality is not there. They don't deserve it. So, so, so Phoebe, they don't deserve it. So Phoebe asked about the justification for the call. I mean, given we have a dented economy, for members of parliament to shrug off the sinking economy and make this request, would you also want to put that in line with um, their counterparts in the region? You have countries paying their members of parliament over $13,000 a month. South Africa is doing that. Um, Nigeria is doing that. Tanzania. You have other countries paying five, seven thousand dollars Here in Sierra Leone, they will tell you oh, we are giving pitans. But then Phoebe also mentioned the issue of corruption. How do we minimize or mitigate corruption when we cannot take care of those we've given jobs, just like you and I, being employed, and we're not, we feel like we're not adequately paid, we cannot meet our daily um, sustenance. Is that not a clear justification for the demands? Now, when you take a single variable to make a comparative analysis, between parliament in the region mm. i mean i think that's why is that 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 that's i mean single variable you've taken because they are paying their counterparts in nigeria south africa and blah 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 uh, thirteen thousand seven thousand dollars ten thousand dollars i mean that single variable cannot be a justification for pay rise for our own parliamentarians let's look at the economy of those countries Look at the performance of um, the, the, the parliaments. Mm. Let's take South Africa, for example, where it was um, uh, 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 um, Malema's party who um, initiated discussions mm. of, or, or, or tabled motions that led to the courts, the South African courts, 
opening an investigation on uh, the former president Jacob Zuma for corruption charges. Mm. For corruption charges. It, th 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 these actions were initiated by members of parliament in the South African parliament. Sir Leon, that is not the case. We yes, we we'll say there is corruption there. There is corruption. There. In fact, the parliament in the the I, was it um, the Carl report was rated as one of the four second most second corrupt. most corrupt institutions, institutions in the country. So the parliament itself, judging by that report, is a corrupt institution. So it has to clean its own image in the very first place. We we'll look at other things. Look at how the economy of Ghana, in as much as the Ghana economy, you know, is dwindling. Inflation is just very got, high. just got bailed out by the IMF. Yeah, inflation is very, very high in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But look at the economic activities going on in the country. Look at the industries. Ghana is industri industrializing their economy. So when you are industrializing your economy, some of these challenges will come. I mean, development literature, ec ec development literature tells us that there are stages in economic development. How much of a pressure? How much of a pressure would these demands put on the economy? Now the speak, um, the, the, the bill is saying when the speaker leaves office, I mean he has to take one of the official uh, vehicles in his possession. Th those who've served us, I mean, as they go, every five years we have to increase their pension by, by, by 25%. I mean, we have to furnish their houses. Come on now. Let's give them 50,000 50, 50, new loans, 50 million old loans. And it, it's, it's just worth it. Uh, so how much of a pressure? Because already we're saying we have an overbloated um, 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 wages and services um, scheme with with so much pressure from different sectors and all of that and this coming up now how much of a pressure would it give to a dying economy if i should put it i think it will just send the economy in coma um, because it has a bearing on the consolidated revenue fund now when you look at the amount the proposed amount mm -hmm salaries or benefits or gratuities as the case may be if that is granted don't you think it will sort of provoke other sector public sector workers to make huge demands as well it will lead to some for some kind of situation where everybody now will be now asking because i want to retire and have at least a good life and live mm. a good life after retirement so everybody will now make it such demands that will demand uh, high salary, will demand X, Y, Z, or blah, blah, blah. The last time when the doctors placed their demands, uh, some people were saying, oh, it was unreasonable, uh, the government could not afford to meet all of those, and blah, blah, blah. Here we have members of parliament who are making huge demands, which will have a telling impact on the consolidated revenue fund. I think those demands are not plausible, they are not reasonable at this time, and they don't deserve it from my point of view. Looking at the parliament, the performance of the parliament, I'm not specifying individual parliamentarians. I'm talking about the parliament as an institution, the parliamentarians in the world. Mm -hmm. Look at their performance of this parliament, the things they have failed to do, which has led us to where we are today. They don't deserve it. Uh, let us just quickly mention that um, we invited Honorable uh, Abdul Mari Conte, who's the chairman of the Legislative Committee, to be a part of this conversation. And he had given consent to be a part of the conversation. But um, unfortunately, we were disappointed um, this morning. So just for our viewers and our listeners to note, we invited Honorable Abdul Mari Conte, the chairman of the Legislative Committee, to be a part of this conversation so we can hear uh, the side of the parliament. Unfortunately, uh, even though he consented, we've not heard from him this morning. Uh, Yes, I just uh, want, want, want to and, and as we continue to uh, answer, uh, as we continue uh, to just give brief information, thank you, Phoebe, for that. And also, we just need to remind our viewers that today, five years ago, President Julius Madabio subscribed to the oath of office as president of the Republic of Sierra Leone, telling us that he was the president of all Sierra Leoneans after being elected. Yeah. Uh, this is a parliament uh, which the audit report of 2019 hmm. indicted that some members of parliament could not account for uh, or failed to account for uh, um, the consul um, constituency development fund. Right. Now, after that report, 
after that report because in 2018 when they were given that 63 million or so it was tied to a condition maybe we will recall that the speaker said in the well of parliament that they were supposed to construct uh, 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 constituency offices those who cannot who, i mean in constituencies where they will not be able to they should rent an office space for constituency matters now the audit report found that some of those parliamentarians in fact a good number of them failed to expend the money for its stated purposes after that report they now changed its nomenclature from constituency development fund to facilitation to constituency facilitation fee which in my opinion simply means it's something that is now given to the member of parliament to facilitate its movement to and from in your in your estimation um, 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 lawrence in your estimation our good friends our members of parliament do not deserve this because of the poor performance that they've put up in the last five years not only that samuel one let us let us don't forget that they collect salaries on a monthly basis mm -hmm. they are they also have sitting fees and other benefits what have you been doing with all of those money that's their personal money why would, you want, okay, why would you want to know so why 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 should we now say the state should buy a vehicle for mr speaker after his retirement he should retain an official vehicle no the the problem is he needs in, three, in, in, in the african security, context he also needs three security personnel uh, uh, listen, listen the, the problem with it is not only sell i think it cuts across so many african countries public servants especially the politicians mm. they want to live at the expense of the state when they leave office because they will not go into any other job but stay with us let me quickly ask um, uh, melvin this question melvin you, you earlier on in, in your submission in your precursory remark you mentioned that the timing is wrong so it it's it, it, it's um it, it begs the question of the sensitivity around issues from our members of parliament. How sensitive are they? Because these are the very people who would approve even the national budget. They would have to scrutinize and give approval to it so they know what's in there. Or could it mean that they already know what's in the budget, which is why they are making these demands because for many they are just shrugging off the, 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 the sinking economy of the nation. I think back to that is aspect of sensitivity. I think the lawmakers are sensitively insensitive on this one. Hmm. They are sensitively insensitive for the fact that what they could be pushing for subtly here is, oh, we know what judges are getting. Oh, we know what ministers and deputy ministers are getting. Right. Oh, we know what even the presidents and vice presidents are getting. So, as lawmakers, we have the power of the purse. How comes we are also not beneficiaries of that? I think it speaks to the broader issue of wage bill harmonization and for the same thing for the pension and gratuities mps fully know that there is a huge disparity between some sectors of the public service that needs harmonizing but for them to go for the bigger picture they prefer using the shortcuts oh let's deal with our own first and later come back to the general state of affairs which i think the public is always going to detest so moving forward i think yes mps their concerns are in place, but the timeline, I used timeliness on the first occasion, mm -hmm. that the fact that now the budget has been approved, and looking at the, 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 the time frame of the dissolution of parliament, do we expect any supplementary budget? They have to look after themselves. They're going out. Who's going to look after them? So, I mean, does that so mean, if you're saying the timing is wrong, somewhere. they do not have enough time. Of course. If you want to do this, you should have started this championing since the first session of parliament, not the last. This is the last session. We've already seen the approval of the budget. Are they clamoring for a supplementary Maybe budget? Maybe some of them, some of them some might not return. So, so why wait until, this until that be, it will be this dangerous? This cannot be a safer exit strategy because there are political ramifications to it. Very soon. Do you know why most of them are, ba are, are backpedaling or not showing up for this kind of conversation? Because they know the electorate are listening and they are paying attention. No SLPP MP wants because to take a blame it, it for might, this. It might be politically wrong for them at this time because many people will think, oh, it's selfishness, so we will not vote them in. But but economically looking at the trends of events is it not possible when you go to your constituency mami fatu come it's tell you say oh a picking um for go mm. society they mm. need help oh um paso he come say oh they don't have a, a, a picking no no able for go school because it shouldn't pull in baggy so these are all pressures on the members of parliament so would it not 
I mean, is it not prudent enough for them to demand from the state what, I mean, economically would be good for them? Someone they should be very careful because they should be violating the constitution itself. In what sense? Because the constitution is very clear that members of parliament should not seek to alienate themselves or seek to unjustly enrich Each themselves. Yes. So in this case, the question begs, or the, the fundamental idea is, why should it be good for just the MPs? And not other sectors of the public service. Mind you, other, I mentioned other, other sectors, other sectors of the public yes. are better paid than members of parliament. No, better I, I, paid. I beg so to We need to go to the to this commission and find out who is the highest. I mean, there is the state salaries, pension, gratuities, and other benefits act of 2003. Right. It not does not. It's, it's not isolated for MPs only. It clearly defines all those whose amendment should be done in tandem with this law. Not only MPs. It should be by cadres, but we, you and not, I know. Not, not necessarily by cadres. You and I know in reality there are state institutions and individuals better paid than members of parliament. So why not harmonize it to fix the board? Which is why that bill is in, in parliament. No, I'm that sure. bill is the only seeking... And salary is uh, 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 compensation, I, I think. So it's why not that. champion it so it's, so it's conclusion? Why introducing a new bill when we don't know the bill? Whether that bill is amending the existing parliamentary service act? Whether that bill is in tandem with the pensions act? Whether that bill Would is in tandem with the result of that bill putting more pressures on the economy than just taking parliament? Okay, let's. I mean, let's take it step by step. After parliament, then when we come back, we will look at other sectors. So now, if parliament has done that and it sails through, what will the judges be saying? It will open a whole Pandora's box for other persons mentioned in these provisions of the law to come forward and say, oh, you've done this for Parliament, why uh, not us? So it cannot be done in isolation. Uh, Melvin, That's the bottom clearly line. Clearly, your opinion and the people's opinion doesn't count in this as far as the MPs are concerned. Wow. Whether, based on how everything <laughs> is going, to a point where you, the strangers, were asked out of Parliament yesterday and nobody's opinion matters, uh, whether agree or disagree, the MPs would get to that point where they would progress on this. But what would be the implications if that becomes a legislation? President Bio might not be getting the favor of the electorate if he, if he gives it a nod. As it stands, there is, another, as an, there is a bill enacted by parliament that has not been assented by the parliament, mm -hmm. which is the tobacco bill. The tobacco do you think President Bio wants to do anything that would make him in a, in, in, in a political suicidal situation where people are going to be vexed to that point that they say, oh, okay, we'll teach you a lesson? Even the MPs themselves understand the political ramification. So they are only doing this and with, in shadow, if I'll put it, in shadow for the fact that, again, you said we were asked out very unfortunately. But again, it's their right. And some of us have argued, now you are amending the standing orders, we were having the constitutional review. There is no way that you can say journalists are strangers in parliament because it violates... You are not members of parliament. No. And when they, and, and the term the some, only some, refers to non-members of parliament. Well, not. Come on, come on. It contradicts the constitution in the first place. Section 11 provides for the media. Mm -hmm. All right? Right. And there is no way standing order 80 can override section 11. How can you call members of the press who are, pro, who are constitutional creatures like parliament itself and call them strangers? Some of us were part of that, 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 that deliberation to amend the standing orders and it was part of our recommendation that no way should journalists be described as strangers in parliament for the fact that they are also created or the institution of journalism is created by the constitution. Similarly to parliament in section 73, they are also a creature of the, uh, of the constitution. So how can you say you are a much more greater constitu uh, constitutional creature than the press? So for me, I think that is, that is an unfair yeah, it's just legislation just and it's a foul we have to round off. Now, Melvin um, points out a very significant Which is? Uh, 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 um, uh, um, 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 provision in the Constitution, Section 11, which mm -hmm. says that uh, uh, we have the responsibility At all time, the press. to yeah. highlight okay, to highlight the responsibility of the government. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one reason why the parliamentary uh, 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 yes. and press was created and mm -hmm. established as the case may be so the constitution in its recognized recognizes the 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 the, the, the role, of the, the the role of the press in parliament now even besides them being asked out because they are strangers as the current standing orders describe them mm -hmm. um there have been instances where Committees will sit at the end of the day because the discussions or the deliberations, you know, <laughs> have some political <laughs> undertone or some political ramifications for the parliament or the parties represented in parliament. 
they will then invoke section 75 eh? yeah 75, 75 premature pre publication, publication. Mm -hmm. to prevent journalists from conveying the outcome of those deliberations to the public it has happened several times right and that is not good for our democracy there are issues of interest to the public when they will sit on it they will then invoke section which, which overrides every other interest in our practice yes but, but i think those are some of the things that uh, they should be pushing for in parliament you wonder we have a good number of parliamentary journalists but we hardly see read or watch parliamentary news in the press because why are, is that so is it because, because they, are they, are being they, they, they are shadow parliamentarians they have been <laughs> untwisted somehow. And because if you come out now and publish some of those things, they will now found, find you wanting for contempt of parliament. parliament. Uh, so it is, it's, it's a very dicey situation. But the whole, what, what's, I think the MPs... In, in, this, in this, how do we lay the tracks now, now that parliamentarians are demanding for this? And by the way, the, the economic situation is saying, please give it to them because they deserve it. Now, TV <laughs> says that uh, our opinion does not matter. I would say even if our opinions do not matter, Mm -hmm. at the very least it will have some amount of influence on the outcome of this particular how much influence in the sense you, that how much influence do you think it would have when you piggyback on the journey to this level it started now, off as fake news here we are strangers were asked out of parliament and here we are don't forget it it's started back in 2022 and 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 some of us are, are publications so how much, rather, in, how much influence uh, uh, do you think that to be it, uh, it would have uh, on confrontational. this uh, uh, so I, I remember when I published um, something on that, a good, some parliamentarians called me, said, Mommy, man, you need for pipe down. Come up here. Where so, how much you, influence would the media and the public have in the decision of this going forward? Now, F F the Bian. people, I'm, uh, just a minute, please. Mm -hmm. The people have the power to change them. Now, we know the parliamentarians in this current parliament. At the end of the day, when the political parties might have submitted their list, their nominated list, and blah blah blah, the NEC will have to publish the, the names of uh, of of um, 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 for those who are running for MPs, you know, the party list that will be generated and blah blah blah. So we we'll have to pick out those names and, and 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 come back to the public and say these are the people. Who <laughs> did and that's XYZ. our voting. And Gentlemen, that's our voting you. pattern. Oh yes, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that. Gentlemen, thank you.